uh, we're going to get started. Sorry, Stephanie, welcome. Thank uh, you. The only one I didn't get a chance to say hello to. Uh, our uh, team downstairs uh, is uh, all fired up. So everything that we do is uh, is uh, on the, on the record on uh, PCTV and uh, uh, will be shown multiple times to our residents and anyone else of uh, interest. So I'll officially call the meeting to order uh, for this uh, August 23rd, uh, 2017 work session. We'll let the minutes reflect that uh, we have uh, uh, all the board minus Linda Cole, uh, who is uh, out of uh, town. Uh, a number of distinguished guests and uh, audience members that we'll have an opportunity to hear from as we move forward. Um, first item is we have the uh, minutes for August 9th, uh, 2017. Would entertain a motion of approval for those um, approval of those minutes. I'll move. A second. Move and second. Any discussion? No. Seeing none. Uh, I would ask for uh, those in favor. Aye. We do. Aye. Yeah, for aye. All those in favor. Aye. aye. Opposed. All right, so that motion uh, is uh, carried. Uh, July, uh, wrapping up July monthly reports, uh, everyone is in except um, uh, Building Zoning Fire Marshal, Local History Room, and Personnel, and uh, I would guess that uh, we should have those by week's end, knowing that, uh, that rule. Uh, we have no public hearings this evening. We do have a couple of guests. Uh, Dr. Putnam, always a pleasure. Thank Stephanie, you. welcome. And uh, I'll ask Mr. Costello uh, to tee this one up. Well, this is for a discussion about the Penfield Education 5K race. Thank you, Tony. Uh, several months ago, Stephanie and I had been uh, corresponding back and forth. Uh, she had shown interest in conducting a 5K race uh, to support the school. Um, I basically sent her on to Chris Bilo, who I think is attempting to be here this evening, although he may not make it at this point. He has a women's field hockey uh, game that he's involved with right now. So um, I know that set, I did uh, recommend that she talk to uh, Chris, and I know you've had correspondence yes, with Chris has. back and yeah. forth, and Tom's been involved. And uh, I think you're trying to mimic what the town has been doing up until this year. And we can let you talk a little bit about you know what you want to do, who you've made contact with in terms of safety issues, that kind of thing. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, can before I, we yep. begin, you wanna. If you don't mind, I'd just like to give a quick update or a, a intro of what the Penfield Education Foundation is, because it's Great. a new organization. Yeah. Yeah. And Excellent. so, um, just as the the background is, um, you know, for the for the past few years, uh, there's been some talk in the community in terms of uh, creating a foundation, like some school districts have. Um, and in 2016, uh, we established the Penfield Education Foundation. Um, and it, it quickly merged with the Penfield Scholarship Association, which is a long-standing uh, back into the 60s that provides a number of scholarships, cash scholarships to students graduating from Penfield High School. Um, we're a private nonprofit, 501c3 tax-exempt organization, and I use the term private because while I um, wear a couple different hats, one being superintendent of the Penfield Central School District, uh, I sit on the board of the Penfield Education Foundation, which is separate from the school district for a number of reasons. Um, and so it is a, a separate organization, but we're here to really support the school district in much of what they do. There's a seven member board, which consists of staff and myself, as well as other parents, uh, Penfield business owners and staff members. I guess the only two staff members are Steph and I, but, <laughs> but um, it's, been a, it's been great. Um, our goal ultimately as we started this foundation is to raise funds for scholarships uh, for our students graduating from Penfield, uh, grants that can go in to support students, teachers in the classroom, as well as extracurricular activities, and really anything that we can support beyond the district's budget. We all know and the town is aware is, is tax caps and, and budget restrictions are, are continuing to be part of what we work with and so the foundation's goal is ultimately to raise uh, money and get that money right back into the school system in unique um, opportunities. Um, so we are now up and running and ready and uh, I'll turn it to Steph because our first official um, fundraiser and uh, money making opportunity in order to uh, provide those grants and scholarships to students is our um, 5k race that we've been working to plan. Thank you. So I'm just handing out a couple of, uh, well, I guess we could pass them around, right? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. And if we can have just uh, one oh, more. Oh, yeah. Have an extra. Next one. Perfect. Oh, I'm okay. getting right over oh, to sure. There we go. You're easing them on them all. All right. 
So what I handed to you Lisa. were three different, um, just a packet of information. And we, um, I've run many 5Ks in my life and other races, but I've never organized or run in a different meaning uh, 5K race. And I guess I didn't realize quite the, um, the involvement it takes to kind of pull something like this off, but because I am pretty passionate about running and passionate about the town and the school district, it kind of merged three things that I love a lot. Um, I've always been, when I'm able, um, I've done the Penfield Family First 5K race and really enjoyed that. Um, it was a kind of a small race. It went through the neighborhoods over a five hill rise. And I always liked just the feel of that race. And as Chris uh, Bilo and I and Tom began talking, it almost seemed um, like the stars were aligned that um, the rec department was kind of thinking of letting go of the race. Um, it had been a number of years. I believe they ran it for 10 years. 11 years. 11 mm -hmm. years. Um, and we kind of had this idea we didn't want to take away from the Family First 5K. And he kind of passed uh, kind of the baton to us um, and kind of giving us a lot of information and kind of stepping out of the 5K, giving us an opportunity to raise funds for our foundation that needs funds right now. So um, we've been re um, kind of recruiting um, sponsorships throughout the town, and we've been really trying to stick to uh, businesses in Penfield or businesses that, help have, that have helped to support our school district. Um, so we've been working on that, and you can see right here a little bit about the sponsorship. Um, we've been doing pretty good. We've secured our uh, premier sponsorship and three gold sponsorships, and um, we're working on silver and bronze. But um, as you can see, if you kind of go, to, um, I included an advertisement if anybody was interested in just kind of promoting it and kind of letting people know hanging it wherever you may work or in any um, environment, that would be great. But I guess what we're really here to talk about is the race, and the last page is kind of the map of the course. Um, does everybody have that? Probably. Okay. So um, it's a Google map. I'm sorry it's not better quality. But we're kind of um, using the Family First Plus uh, combined with a race we used to run. The school district did the Karen Grant Memorial 5K a number of years ago. but. Um, because the school district couldn't provide the insurance, it kind of got, the, there wasn't enough funds to continue that race. So you can see you kind of start at the PHS track and uh, runners are gonna run 200 meters around the track, come up along the community center route. And the biggest um, traffic concern or safety concern we kind of envision is crossing Baird Road um, to get into the Henderson, uh, to get onto Henderson. So um, Tom has worked with the fire department. I yeah, worked with the uh, Penfield Volunteer Fire Department. And, Brian uh, Begley. Yep, and they're very um, happy to, to work with us. I do have to just get them a letter with the specific date and time. So, okay. um, uh, Chris Collison, uh, who's also um, on uh, fire marshal, I believe, or I'm going to probably lieutenant. I'm going to get his name. I'm going to get his title incorrect. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, but got another it. great Penfield parent. and. Um, and uh, uh, Mr. Withall as well. So okay, they've been uh, really, really supportive and uh, and said they can help us out there. We've also had reached out to uh, Monroe County Sheriff, who the school district has a really strong relationship with. And the toughest part with that is that if obviously an emergency comes up, they, they can't always be there on time. Where the fire, um, Penfield Volunteer Fire Department has been wonderful and, and can put it on their calendar and make sure they're there. So once our runners cross onto Henderson, um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the neighborhood. We're going to uh, take a right onto Ludlow and uh, then a right onto Hillary to come out uh, on Brentwood. And then people are going to have a little climb. I think they have that in the Penfield family first, yeah. uphill rise. Um, we've put our water table at the very top of Hill Rise. Um, the address is 150 Hill Rise. It's one of our colleagues, and he has. Um, okay that we can have our water stop up there in the Harris Hill Elementary School Girls on the Run um, group. They're going to kind of man the water stop, which is nice to involve the younger girls. Um, going to go down to Avon Moore, Foxborn, um, loop back around Hillary and kind of where the dotted lines are, um, we're going to kind of repeat ourselves, finish with one lap around the track. Um, so it does uh, certainly impact uh, the neighbors and the residents in this area. 
So um, our thought, and I guess we'd look to you guys, would be um, I have a committee who has helped to organize this. And after each meeting, uh, some of us go for a run. And we could create some kind of flyer, whether it just not open the mailbox but possibly stick it there or tape it somewhere, just um, kind of announcing that this race a couple weeks in advance um, is going to possibly impact the neighborhood. Um, we were also talking about doing a couple lawn signs in the neighborhood just warning. Uh, you know, a small race will be coming through. We expect, um, our goal is 200 runners. Um, we went live with registration a few weeks ago and we're up to 75 or 80 runners. So we're happy with that and we haven't been able to advertise to the school community yet just because we're not back in sure. session. Um, We've been uh, now Gene, the town, or Chris Vilo turned his um, connection over to us, and they were kind enough to to give us 200 uh, red water bottles for the race. Um, Very nice. Trying to tempt some people in because everybody likes water bottles, it seems. And uh, add, add to uh, as of um, today, yeah. we've insured, we've uh, we've secured insurance as well, so we have an insurance rider, um, and that was one of the issues Steph mentioned where we used to run a, a Memorial 5K. Um, but it, because it wasn't a school district race, um, school district insurance can't cover those things. Sure. And so you need that in insurance rider. So we do have insurance uh, okay. as well, which Good. is obviously Great. looking out for the safety of everybody involved. Excellent. So I know that uh, we, we have the capability uh, as part of our system uh, that uh, when, we, when we do projects around the town, uh, we, uh, we can identify uh, property addresses and uh, prepare uh, postcards uh, that goes out that notifies you know this property is under review come on this date sure. this is what's going on so we have that uh, we have that ability that um, uh, Mr. Castello and I spoke about uh, today uh, that uh, we have done I think for ours in the past um, and uh, we could uh, offer that uh, that information you know to the school district so that uh, that way you hit the actual homes along the way that would be great and uh, it's a it's a very it's a very easy and expensive uh, way to go but but you hit everybody and that that whole neighborhood has been you know not, nothing but uh, fantastic and uh, supportive in fact uh, folks uh, like to sit along the, the race uh, route and uh, cheer everybody on so it's uh, kind of a nice it's, it, you know it's really developed into a nice run that would so, be just on behalf of the foundation that would be uh, incredibly helpful and obviously we want to i think that helps to because the last thing we want to do as a, as a foundation is is upset anybody so right. <laughs> the more we can do to, to uh, let people know and i'll share that with the i did run once the, the Aaron grant um, um uh, race and there was there's people out front and, yeah. and you know a cheering, lot of kids coming cheering. out and cheering yeah. people on so i think that's, that's wonderful excellent the, the only thing i would suggest and, and it doesn't have to be fire police and it doesn't have to be a sheriff's uh, deputy but sure. at the brentwood hill rise yeah. i would make sure you have one or two Smart race volunteers so, yeah. just to because that's the the pinch point there for that neighborhood especially on a sunday morning yeah with the traffic in and out and so no, thank you for bringing that up, and um, we we are going to be working with Coach Hennessy. He's our coach, uh, cross country coach, still? and he yeah. still is. Yeah. I know yeah. he's yeah. legendary, <laughs> and he um, he's going to supply us with some race marshals. He said, and um, he doesn't want his uh, cross country athletes running the race just because they're going to be in season, but he would like them to be volunteering. Well, he said, yeah. So. Yeah, very good, very good, excellent. Great. <coughs> looks uh, looks great. Uh, board uh, questions uh, for the superintendent uh, or uh, Stephanie. The only question I have is, um, what is the fun run? Is it the, the same uh, same route? Or? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so no, the fun run is simply like what it sounds. Um, there's going to be. It's probably. I mean, we don't have an age limit on it, but I guess we're envisioning kids 10 and younger. Um, we'll do a couple laps just simply around the track. Um, there are no winners. There's no timing for that. Um, we will just kind of use a stopwatch. All the kids will get a ribbon. And, um, and I would like to reach out to um, one of the local farms to see if maybe we can work out a deal and have the kids have get a pumpkin at the end of it and a little ribbon. Just kind of a fun event. Um, we do for the 5K, we are using PCR timing. Um, Paul Richards out of East Rochester, I know he's worked with you guys before yes. and he was great. So, But yeah, that's kind of the kids' fun run. And okay. 
staff uh, questions, I think you've got concerns. the two people here that are going to be generating the addresses for you, so that's pretty easy. <laughs> Take care of that. Okay. Very good. Other than you that, guys you are experienced that. with the okay, uh, great. safety is a big thing, obviously. Absolutely. For you as well. That's yeah. Right. That's, I know your primary concern, as it is ours. So that, that's the main issue. And then, of course, getting people in and out of those neighborhoods that they need to in order to make Absolutely. So that's, that's wonderful, and I'll work. Uh, we'll work to get a you know our postcard ready, and then you know we can take care of the the mailing if we had those specific addresses. That would be great. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. It, it seems to make a big difference, and uh, you know once folks are aware and, and uh, know what's going on, you know they they become nothing but supportive. So that's uh, it, always you know in terms of our the the pencils and great being green as well so so uh, I always worried about mm -hmm. hanging flyers on mailboxes yeah. and then they sure. get, they get yeah. blown away so if it's a postcard that, that makes, a little it more makes it, yeah, <laughs> Sorry. makes it, it, makes it and, and you'd like to think that folks uh, at least uh, then take a look at it yeah um, before it hits the blue box so, so, which is always a nice thing so that's great okay. excellent anything anything additional for us uh, at this uh, at this love you to come out and run <laughs> If you're interested, yeah. and if not, on Paula Street, she'll be there. I'm at the Perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the <laughs> Perfect. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I see, I see the slowdown occur, right? But <laughs> uh, She's on the, uh, yeah, about right halfway up the, uh, the airline. So. The rise. <laughs> and we'll, uh, and we're working with a couple of, um, uh, Hopefully, some food truck vendors who would be down at the high school. So, um, and, uh, garbage so plates when you're done. No, <laughs> it's tell them it's it's, Well, so it's not formal yet, but uh, it's um, Kettle Ridge Farms, which is actually um, out towards uh, um, Victor, yeah. um, but very connected. Penfield graduates mm -hmm. uh, who who own it, uh, and um, and they actually have a uh, pancake truck. I was going to so say that's what that's um, what I recall hearing. Is yeah, that, so uh, they're they're yeah, excited. Cool. They're, they just have to work on their t if they if they are available. That that day they're going to help us out and be there but it's really um, cool yeah should be should be a great event i mean obviously one of the pieces we're just excited about is it's a 5k it's it's um fundraising which is great and obviously when you run a 5k the fundraising really isn't in the participants but in the sponsorship yeah, absolutely. Um, right. but ultimately with the penfield education foundation it's all about bringing the community together and and so we're hoping that it's really just a beautiful day and, and we can get the community out to, to celebrate the schools and, and and what we can do to support each other so uh, i will say tom that i haven't seen this group run much but i've seen a meet and they do a great job so uh, <laughs> nothing else awesome. uh, they should, they i will join you for a pancake that day <laughs> <laughs> we should be on hand. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Stay connected you. certainly with uh, with uh, Chris and uh, Kaz, and uh, we can we can assist and support uh, as it relates to the addresses. Thank you. Awesome. Good luck with that. I hope, uh, hopefully uh, raise some great money uh, for the uh, for the foundation and uh, for the scholarships. Ralph Peak's still part of that. Uh, sure is. Ralph Peak God bless, is. God bless Ralph. So uh, Ralph Peak actually uh, <laughs> we brought him on. So he's one of the seven members that's, on, that's the, on the board and has been he's nothing awesome. but incredible um, for running the Penfield um, Scholarship Association for so many years and, and being committed to Penfield yeah. um, we we were able to it was a great meeting when he decided <laughs> to join us uh, on fan, our yeah, new foundation so. he does our accounting and he does yeah, well, all I was just going to say and, he's, uh, he's a good numbers guy and uh, yeah. he, was, uh, he was a great planning board member uh, for the town for many years and yeah. uh, he's just a uh, you know, he and his family are great, uh, great Penfield spokespeople. So that, we were, that's fantastic. The other nice piece, I think, as this, as this grows, is we were able to um, secure bullet um, aid through uh, Senator Funky's office. So um, that was nice as well. Any, anything helps and, and sort of gives, uh, it's nice to, to see that. I know we're always looking at the sort of the, the state bullet aid and what it can do to support our schools and this foundation. It's great. Every dollar counts. Every dollar counts, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Every dollar can get back. Every dollar <laughs> can get back. That's exactly, that's that's right. exactly right. So. All right, great. Thank, thank you for thank taking you for the time. Thanks. Good luck on your uh, upcoming school year here. That just seems to be like uh, knocking on our door. So good luck on a, a successful 2017-18 uh, school year. Thank you. All Believe right. it or not, we kick off with teachers a week from today. Uh, <laughs> it's, I, it's I, here. I'm, I'm well aware. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well aware. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Well, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. So good much. to see you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right, uh, we'll move on to action items. Uh, we'll recognize uh, Mr. DeMarco and uh, Alan, uh, if you'd like to join us at uh, the table uh, to talk a little bit about uh, requesting placement of freestanding sign of the right-of-way at Brant Point Drive. And uh, Mr. Costello, I'd ask you if uh, you would uh, add any additional comments uh, uh, no, to kick actually, this off. Actually, I, I didn't get your name. It's uh, Alan. Yeah. 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 
I oversee the, yeah. the property. Regional manager. How come I know him and you don't, Kelsey? He's still thinking about the paint. Because you know everything. That's why right. yeah. you know, like you're, you're sitting there. there. That's why like you're sitting there. That's right. But uh, just to introduce John. Um, when they when they wind out Brand Point, uh, they had to take out the sign that identified uh, uh, Daniel's Creek uh, uh, apartment complex, um, which left them a little room, if any, to do it out front. So they have now made an offer to try and relocate it at the point where there's now kind of a Y onto uh, the Walmart property, then trying to preserve the area for Daniel's Creek and Brand Point, so that that's not a thoroughfare for those coming to Walmart. And in doing that, they need some identity for that project, and they're offering. And I think you've all got a packet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they are showing the area in yellow um, along the right of way. And there's some good photographs in there. There's one in particular. Um, yeah, which I can area. share. If, if. Yeah, we were looking at okay. it this morning. Okay, you do have that. Yep. Yeah, you all have it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And um, the one that's the one of the things that stands out the most is this one right here. Yeah. Um, this one pretty much tells you where the signs are supposed to be. It gave you a lot of a lot of information, but really this is the one that's the important one, I think, because this is the one that identifies where you'd like to have the sign, where the red mark is. And I think uh, the red mark just identifies it, but I think the signs probably tip more towards Bram Point. Oh, correct, just a little. In a yep. way that's how it'll end up. Yeah. Yeah. And towards Empire. Right? As Mr. LaFountain noted this morning, and I did not know this, but there is a water main underneath that area, but you've already received approval from the Monroe County Water Authority to allow that to be installed. Yes. Subject to calling before you dig. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes. And sure. just for the board's information, the sign they're proposing is actually 11 square feet in area. Um, they are entitled by code to have 20 square feet. They're proposing 11. Um, and then the stanchion around at the, uh, the brick. Uh, monument. monument area is 40 square feet, which is permitted by code as well. So the sign itself is actually in compliance. The only issue at hand is that it's in the right of way and the entity that has to approve or, or deny that uh, request. Are there any sight line considerations or concerns? We have looked at it. Uh, uh, we were out there the other day. If the sign is, is actually facing towards Brant Point, there aren't. If it's tipped inward the way it shows on this, there, there could possibly be. I don't think that there's going to be a problem there. As a matter of fact, it was approved by the planning board subject to your approval. Uh, they did show that as being part of the application for site plan approval for the Walmart site. Um, so it's been kind of vetted out by the planning board and by town staff. The only issue at hand is how it's actually going to sit on the property. Yep, and I think it was, uh, was indicated by, uh, by the applicant um, looking to be tipped more towards, um, you know, as you're coming in from Empire from Boulevard. Empire, so, right. so as it comes in, and again, the, the idea, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting intersection uh, there, you know, as it, uh, as it has, as it has developed. Uh, and uh, I think having that uh, sign there certainly helps separate uh, the uh, residential from the, the commercial That's component right. of that overall. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. okay. I've got no problem. Okay. I think the sign looks great. Okay. I'm. I'm. Yeah, good. Good. yeah I'm good. Okay. So uh, would uh, entertain a motion of approval uh, for that, uh, for the record. I'll move to approve um, as requested. Second. Okay. We move and second. It. Uh, any uh, further discussion? Staff, anything additional? Just they obtain all the required uh, sign permits for the site and uh, comply with whatever the fire marshal and the uh, building inspectors require for that. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, okay, so that carries. Uh, good luck. Uh, it's, uh, the project is uh, winding. The project is winding down. Uh, probably the uh, the easiest uh, component uh, of uh, everything that was uh, done in that uh, that particular location. So, yeah. all yes. right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you Enjoy the rest of. Uh, of your summer as it shortens out. And uh, we look forward to seeing the new sign in that uh, area, helping to direct uh, folks um, not only into the residential component, but also to the uh, commercial site. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you guys very much. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Be well. You too. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Jim, you can make a better presentation than me. Seriously, no. Move, uh, move on to uh, our second item. It's uh, 1385. Uh, Empire Boulevard, it's the uh, Empire Storage. Um, 
Uh, Steve uh, could not uh, join us at the public hearing. Uh, he sent his uh, able body mother, uh, who did a terrific job uh, representing uh, yourself and uh, your grandfather. And uh, so, Kaz, if uh, any additional comments or anything new, the board should be aware of on this application. Have we received any more information from what you received at the public hearing? Um, I think this is the function of your feelings towards the application and where you want to go with it more than anything else. Okay. All right. So, board. Uh, any questions, concern, any additional questions, uh, either for staff or the applicant uh, that uh, uh, that we have? Uh, uh, I at, think the they hearing, at the hearing, we had a few questions that were fully answered, and I have uh, I have no concerns at this point about moving forward with next steps. Okay. Excellent. Um, board. Everybody else is uh, good uh, with that. Uh, Just a question. Um, I, I know it may be a period of time before you actually get going uh, with the interior aspect of it. Um, the exterior, have you got a time frame as to when you want to start working on the exterior of the building? Um, I actually just met with a um, painter um, two days ago, and he was going to come down with a sales rep to see what. Because we're trying to get them to match the mini warehouses and the trick Makes is sense. Yeah. finding a sealant for the roof right. that you can tent. So they're trying to figure that out first and he's supposed to be coming down Thursday or Friday and I'll be, if, um, if that works out, we'll start hopefully the weather's still soon, nice, as right? soon as the weather permitting Great. sooner than later. Yeah, try to pick a day when it doesn't rain for a day <laughs> or two. Or an hour. <laughs> or an hour. <laughs> good one. We already had it this week. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> all right, very good. Um, seeing no other questions, um, all the questions being addressed at the public hearing. No additional uh, comments or input from staff or PRC. Entertain a motion of approval for uh, this uh, application. Moved. Second. Okay, so it's uh, moved and seconded. Um, and uh, we'll uh, direct uh, Mr. Castell to prepare a resolution for our September 6th uh, board meeting, and, uh, and you know, listing the conditions that we uh, that we talked about, uh, which are the standard uh, conditions. And uh, that uh, you're welcome to attend. Not uh, not required, but certainly welcome to attend that meeting if you so uh, desire. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so motion carries 4-0. Uh, uh, thanks. Good luck. And uh, thanks for continuing the uh, cleanup of that area. Uh, Jim and I were uh, talking about that uh, today, that uh, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, change in that area, and uh, I think the many warehouses have uh, fit in there, and it really has uh, helped uh, that area overall. So hopefully that uh, has worked as well for you as the owner operator as it is the town uh, yep. for that area in LaSalle's Landing. Yeah, we're planning to keep going. So good, excellent. Okay. All right, All right. Thanks for see you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good to see you. Enjoy see the rest of your summer. You. All right, we'll uh, move on to uh, the third item: <coughs> uh, outside storage of tires, uh, 1821 Penfield Road. And be, before I turn it over to Mr. Costello, uh, this was uh, something that was on the agenda now for as a health item for a couple of months, uh, pending um, uh, Mr. Costello, our fire marshal, doing some uh, legwork and review not only at this location but other other locations as well. And uh, with that, uh, Mr. Costello, if you would uh, give us a, an update. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. As you know, uh, this came to us uh, last year, actually, late last year. Um, and we've been just kind of monitoring the situation. As you noted, we did receive a complaint that there was an excessive number of tires, which was true at that location. Um, the applicants did come in and talk about the fact that they had a problem with their supplier trying to get rid of those tires as they had uh, a fire or something in their, their main area, which really prevented them from coming out and collecting the tires on a regular basis. So that built up the tires on his site. The site is very small. I've been there with uh, Bar Marshall our marshal and I have looked at it. There's really no good place to put them other than where they are along the sidewalk on the back of the building. If we were to put them anywhere else, they'd be very visible from the street, from Mott's Lane, and probably from Penfield Road. The other issue, too, is if there was some kind of an enclosure, we looked at the idea of constructing an enclosure around the area. It doesn't provide uh, access around the building, which the fire, fire department uh, and the fire marshal would like to keep in place. Right now, there actually is uh, the ability to get around the building if you have to. 
Uh, we looked at other locations in the four corners that also have tires restored in a similar fashion, but to the back of the building so you don't see them from any, any angle from the street or from the parking lots. Um, in this case, um, the recommendation really is, is to keep them where they are now, not to let them you know, expand an area. Uh, since the point in time that uh, the owners have met with you, they have done a good job of maintaining their, at about between 10 and 20 tires at any given time. They haven't let them build up to a point where they're blocking areas or becoming a, a, a nuisance or an eyesore. Have there been any additional complaints at all? No, we haven't uh, because I think they've done a pretty good job since that point in time of, of maintaining the situation. Um, the fire marshal uh, indicated that as long as it stays the way it is and doesn't become a problem the way it was back in September, he would be comfortable with allowing it to stay. There actually is um, some issues under the state code that you're supposed to have these gigantic boxes that you put them in, but there's no room in any of those areas over there in the four corners to mm -hmm. do that. So as a result, if we can keep it the way it is, we'd be supportive of letting it happen if they, they maintain uh, removal of the tires on a, on a regular basis. So uh, two things, guys. Um, first, uh, if this were a brand new build, uh, it sounds like uh, either from a code requirement, uh, <clears throat> not so much our internal code, but uh, you know, from the fire code standpoint, uh, might require some type of a, a box affair that uh, would have to be part of the or, or an enclosure or, area or that enclosure. Uh, you would you would designate as part of the site plan review process. Okay. And it, it, in this case, this has been going on for over 50 years at this point in time. So I, you know, it's not it's nothing new. It just got out of control in that one period of time. And it was a valid concern and complaint. So um, they're going to have to be vigilant and making sure that if their supplier can't get that stuff out of their property, somebody else is going to have to do it for them. So my second thing uh, would be, and again, uh, it wasn't it wasn't so much uh, the property owner. Uh, the property owner was uh, dealt a hand uh, that the that the uh, vendor had a fire and was not accepting its tires uh, until they got that cleaned up. So I think one of the one of the items that uh, we would say is, uh, you know, in any type of uh, a letter back, is that uh, certainly if if that ever got to that point uh, again in the future because of something not under his control, he, he still has uh, the requirement to make sure that he's properly taking care of that and keeping that kind of within spec uh, of uh, fire marshal and the fire code. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, think I think as long to, as we put them on that notice. And I think to let us know. Yeah. Let, yeah. let someone in the yep. town know that that's before, you know, that there's an issue with the fire, uh, fire marshal. Okay, good. good. Other questions or comments, board, on uh, this particular item? No, no. We'll direct uh, Mr. Costello uh, to prepare a letter uh, to the property owner so that uh, they have it uh, as part of their uh, record. I'll uh, move. Thank you, Rob. Uh, so it's moved. Is there second. a second? Second uh, by Paula. Uh, any further discussion or any further input uh, from staff? All right, seeing none, uh, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, carries 4-0. Uh, we have no informational items. Um, health items are as um, as uh, listed. Uh, we have no new business. Uh, so the next uh, workshop uh, session is uh, slated for uh, Wednesday, September 13th, uh, 2017, at this location, 7 p.m. And uh, this meeting uh, is uh, officially adjourned at uh, 7:35 p.m.